Hi, I'm Burton Thompson with Thompson RV in Pendleton, Oregon. And today we're going to be going through a typical customer walkthrough and orientation on the 2012 Wind River 280 front kitchen model. Keep in mind that not everything will look exactly the same or operate exactly the same, but this will give you a pretty basic idea on how everything operates and give you some pointers and, and allow you to use your RV uh, uh, correctly. Uh, we're going to start on the outside. We're going to go around and show you the locations of everything. On most of your new RVs, most of the, uh, the uh, appliances and everything are operated from the inside of the vehicle, but we're going to go around the outside and just show you kind of where everything's hiding and, uh, and just uh, how everything works here. So we'll start with the first thing you want to do whenever you're going to park at your campsite is level up the RV first. And the first thing you want to do is level side to side, of course. So roll up on blocks or whatever you need to do to get level side to side. And then go ahead and unhook once you're level side to side. Of course, your tongue jack will raise you up and down the front to be front to back level. And then once you're perfectly level, go ahead and crank down the stabilizer jacks. On this model, they happen to be electric, so we have buttons in the back, which we'll get to, that you just hit the button and they go right on down and stabilize the vehicle. With electric jacks, they'll run down. Uh, if the ground's a little bit unlevel, one will hit first, then the second one, then they'll put a little weight in and you're good there. Once you're all level and stabilized, go ahead and run your slide outs out and, and you're ready to start camping. We're just going to work our way around in a circle on this particular unit here. This is just your refrigerator ventilation. Um, about the only thing with that is people will go inside here and clean it out, blow it out, just make sure everything stays clean. Other than that, there's not a lot to do. Just don't block the venting. Here is just your typical furnace access and furnace exhaust uh, when the heater is running. Right up here, you have your uh, range vent over your cooking top. Uh, other models will have tabs that you may need to open up to let that vent open, but this one is all automatic. Just turn the fan on inside and it works great. So here is your water heater. Uh, about the only things on the outside of this particular unit is you have two reset buttons here and here. If for some reason your water heater uh, fails to work, which it'll tell you inside, uh, you can come out here and gently push in on these two reset buttons and everything will most likely be up and running again. Your drain plug is right down here. That's how you drain water out of the water heater if uh, you need to winterize. And then you also have a kill switch over here in the corner for the electric element if you're going to drain it. It protects the electric element when the tank is empty. Moving around into the front. On this particular unit, we have a Atwood power jack. Uh, with extend and retract here and also a hookup light in the front. On the propane tanks you have a quick open flip top so you can access the open the, uh, the, the valves. We'll take the cover off for the, for the video here. On this particular unit it comes with a barbecue tee to where you can hook up a 12 foot hose out to your barbecue. The nice thing about this is it's before the propane regulator so you're running high pressure, so you can run your Weber's and your typical high pressure barbecues. Now on the regulator, you always want to select which side you would like to run first. So this, the arrow is pointing to the left, we're currently running this bottle first. When this bottle runs empty, as long as the other one's open, it'll just internally start grabbing propane off the next tank. That way in the middle of the night, if the heat's running and one bottle goes empty, you won't wake up and be cold. It will automatically start pulling out of the next tank. So just go ahead and leave them open and loose. Now with this particular regulator, to, to notice if the tank you're running first is currently empty, you can look straight down level into this window here. And if you look level into the window and it's silver, you're still drawing propane, everything's good. If the red card comes up, it's telling you the one it's pointing to is empty and it's currently running on the next bottle. You could then flip the lever around to the other side and go fill up that tank. Do keep in mind that you also never want to run your regulator in the middle, which will lower your gas pressure. Always select one side or the other to keep your gas pressure at the appropriate levels. Behind the propane tanks, we have your RV batteries. Now, the, on, a new, on any new RV, we include two maintenance-free deep cycle RV batteries. We go maintenance-free so our customers don't have to check the water levels periodically. The maintenance free allows them just to forget about the batteries, but just you know worry about keeping them charged and that sort of thing. But it takes away any maintenance and any issues there. Now with your RV batteries, 
they will charge anytime there's power coming to the RV. So whether you're plugged in and driving down the road with a charge line on the pickup, that will charge the batteries, plugged in with the power cord to shore power, or plugged in and running a generator. Any sort of power charge will, will take care of the batteries. This particular RV comes with a 10 watt ZAMP solar panel mounted to the roof. Solar does an excellent job to maintain the batteries during camping sessions if you're not able to be plugged into a power source. Please see our other video on the benefits of solar panels. Over here is the city water inlet. If you're in, if you're in an RV park or in a campground where you can hook up a garden hose, that water pressure through the garden hose will go throughout the RV to all the faucets. Now the only thing with city water is you want to always use a pressure regulator to keep the water pressure down to a safe level. You never know how much pressure is going to be uh, at, the, at the city water hookup there. Here is an outside shower with hot and cold water outside to rinse off your sandy feet if you're at the beach or what have you. With the, with the slide outs there is not a lot of maintenance. Basically you want to keep the top clean of debris, whether it be leaves, pine needles, sticks, things like that that possibly may fall onto the top of the roof. Most RVs you can safely walk up on the roof and sweep it off and make sure it stays clean. We also install slide toppers which are awnings that go out over the slide out that keep debris off the top. Here is the sewer dump location on this particular unit. Now this RV is equipped with one black tank or toilet tank and two gray tanks. One to the right of the dump tank here and one in front of the axles. Right behind the stickers are the valves. So we want to, we want to dump the black tank first. Pull, pull that gate valve open once that tank has dumped. Let's go ahead and leave it open because this one is equipped with a Santa flush or a black tank flush which is great to rinse that tank out. You can hook this hose up for a couple minutes and let that tank spray out really good and once it's, you feel it's clean, go ahead and shut the water off here and close the black tank. You can then dump the gray tanks which the shower water and sink water will rinse out your sewer hose keeping it a little more clean. Now if you're going to be staying in this RV for a prolonged time, you can leave the gray tanks open so as you shower and use the sinks that water leaves. But you always want to leave the black tank closed so that all the water volume builds up in there so that when you do pull it, the water volume helps pull everything out of the toilet tank and keep it more clean so that it'll help when you use the sewer flusher. Here is the satellite and cable TV inlets for this particular unit. Um, if, you, if the park provides cable TV, you can hook up coax cable and that'll bring it in right to the TV or you can purchase a satellite dish, which we carry many different varieties of satellite dishes here in our store that are now fully automatic. That you turn them on, they will spin around, lock on to DirecTV or Dish Network and bring satellite into your nice HD TV inside. Here is the fresh water tank fill. If you were going to fill the portable tank and take it with you camping, you just put the water hose directly in this port. You want to fill it relatively slow so that the tank can ventilate properly. When the water starts pouring back out, you're all full and you're ready to go. The drain is right underneath where you fill it to drain the tank. It's nice to keep the tank drained. If you're not using the water, it keeps it from going stale. On this one, you just pull the gate valve open and it drains out of an inch and a half knife valve. This 2012 Wind River comes with a Marine Co. twist lock power cord to plug into shore power. Align the slots appropriately, twist lock it, and then tighten the locking ring. It's always important to remember to always run directly off 30 amp power to run the air conditioner. You need full power to run those large air conditioners. You can reduce down to, with a power cord adapter to say 15 amp and run out an extension cord. If you'd like to just keep your RV batteries charged, run your fridge and that sort of thing. You can run everything except for the air conditioner. You just need full 30 amp power for the air conditioner. Here is uh, the full super large storage compartment here on this particular Wind River all the way through the other side with the really nice baggage door locks here. A person can pull this plug out and store the sewer hose in the bumper during travel. All of our RVs come with a spare tire, inflated and ready to go. Here is the exterior ladder allowing you to climb on the roof of your RV. You need to confirm that your RV has a walk-on roof before doing so. Most newer RVs are equipped with a rubber roof blanket. The biggest thing with RVs is keeping the water out of them. You really want to at least twice a year climb up there and check your roof sealant and make sure that all of your seams and moldings and vents are looking very well sealed. 
If you notice anything that looks questionable, you want to grab yourself a tube of Dicor rubber roof sealant and goop right over the existing sealant you know, over any spots that look questionable. Another good idea to keep your rubber roof soft and pliable is to, every you know, three years or so, uh, use a rubber roof treatment or UV conditioner to protect it from the sun. Very good idea to keep that roof maintained as it gets a lot of sun and weather. Here is the other side of the full pass-through storage. Probably have to have you come right around this direction to see the stabilizer jack switches. So in this particular unit, here are the extend and retract switches for your stabilizer jacks on all four corners of the RV. Now keep in mind, some RVs are most likely a manual crank down style, uh, but this one here is electric on the switches. This awning is also electric. A one touch button inside will run the awning right on out. Um, if you have a manual awning, please refer to our website uh, for function and a refresher course on the manual awnings. The new 2012 Wind Rivers are also equipped with an exterior TV location to where you can have the awning out and have a nice little tailgate party out here. You can remove the interior TV and dock it out here and then hook up to cable or satellite if you're already hooked up on the other side to your satellite or cable TV provider. Also, it has a couple 110 outlets outside to run power off to something else out here underneath the awning. Here are Goodyear Marathon tires on this Wind River. Uh, this is a brand new trailer, so we have to stress to check the lug nuts periodically as you're putting miles on this new rig. These rigs will break in, so to speak, and you have to keep an eye on the lug nuts, especially in that first year. Also, you want to read your tire and keep it inflated to the uh, maximum cold pressure listed on the tire. <clears throat> so now, let's go on the inside. Here is the thermostat which controls the heating and air conditioning in the RV. Basically, if you keep the fan on automatic and select which appliance you would like to run, you can set the temperature and it will keep you right there just like your house would. It also has a fan mode which just cycles air through the air conditioner and actually does not give you any air conditioning. Just gives a, it's, it's very nice to just ventilate that way. Here are some interior switches and porch light switches. And then here is the very nice outdoor RV uh, system monitor panel. Here is your slide out room which runs your, sl your slide in and out. Also your power awning, extend and retract on the outside. Here's the monitor panel showing battery condition and also how full all of your holding tanks are. So as your holding tanks start to fill up, the lights start to go up and as your fresh water starts to run out, if you're running on uh, tank water, it will start to uh, go down. Also, to, it's very simple to uh, turn on your water heater, whether it be on gas or 110 electric. If you're plugged into electricity, it makes sense to just go ahead and use the electric element. So you just go ahead and turn on the electric side. If you're camping in the woods and you're not running uh, on power, you might as well use the gas side. It is direct spark ignition. So you turn it on, in 10 or 15 seconds, the fault light will go out telling you that it's currently running on gas. If the light stays on, it just tells you that it didn't light the first time. Feel free to turn it off and try it again two or three times and then go check the reset buttons ex on the exterior of the water heater. The light went out and we're currently running on gas. You also have a water pump switch here for if you're in the mountains running uh, water out of the tank. And then here is the optionally equipped 10 watt ZAMP solar panel on this particular unit. On this particular unit, the 10 watt is an all or nothing type panel. You just turn it on when you want it. There isn't a charge regulator on it to tell it when to shut off and that sort of thing. So basically you just turn it on as needed uh, and it works great. Here is the refrigerator. Most refrigerators uh, have an automatic feature where you can move these over to auto and it will always look for electricity first. If it finds that you're plugged into electricity, it's going to go ahead and take that every time. As soon as you unplug or the power goes out or what have you, it will automatically switch to gas. It will just do it totally on its own and you won't have to worry about it. It's a very nice feature, very good reason for leaving the propane bottles on so you have that backup plan. You can also switch it all the way over just to gas, which it'll light up on gas telling you you're on that. 
that's great if people are out running generators. Uh, every time, you, you know, if you're on auto and every time you fire up the generator, it's going to want to switch to electric and you shut off the generator and it goes back to gas. So to keep it from switching back and forth, you can run it on strictly gas, which will keep it from jumping back and forth. If it doesn't light on gas, similar to the water heater, this will flash telling you to check and, and note, make note that it did not light. Again, turn it off, try it again. Usually the gas just didn't quite get there. You also have your temperature control dial right here. Typically running in the middle keeps your, your fridge at the ideal temperature. This particular Norcold refrigerator also is equipped with a uh, defrosting or, or airing out lever where you can push this in about half an inch. The door is open about half an inch and it leaves it open to air it out in the winter time if it's in storage, but yet not allow the door to just be swinging around. So it's not actually a lock when it's closed. It's actually when it snaps in, it is locked. That is just a nice airing out feature there. Here is your propane alarm down to the floor. Propane, if propane happened to be coming out of the stove, if somebody bumped a lever or something, it would come down to the floor and set the alarm off. The microwave, uh, pretty self-explanatory. If you're plugged into electricity or have electricity in the RV, the microwave is just like any household microwave. You do have a light and a fan here for cooking. The range top has a piezo igniter. So you turn on each, whatever particular burner you would like to cook on and click clockwise continually until that burner lights. Now the oven, and all ovens are still this way, uh, the oven is a manual light oven. So you turn the oven dial to pilot, and it works best if you hold the knob in on pilot, and way down underneath the middle of the bottom shelf, there's a pilot assembly where you're going to hold a long neck lighter on that for approximately 10 or 15 seconds. Once you get the pilot flame lit, wait a little bit, and go ahead and turn up the oven knob to the appropriate temperature, and it's going to take off and go. This unit is equipped with a fantastic fan power vent, which you can open here with the knob, select in or out airflow, and then your fan speed over here. It's great to ventilate. With any RV, you would need to ventilate a little bit to keep uh, condensation to a minimum. We're going to work our way around here in the slide out. This one is a, this is a table and chair unit. Many units will come with a, a booth, which can be made into a bed as well. And this one is a hide-a-bed sofa. Pulls out just like any household hide-a-bed. Now let's go to the entertainment center. The entertainment center um, comes with a Jensen CD player and DVD player. All you have to do is insert a DVD with the TV remote. Just go to your input or source button and select audio video one to play movies. CDs also go in right there. This particular unit has uh, exterior speakers. So you have speakers A, B for inside and C for exterior. Also is equipped with an iPod docking hookup. Down here uh, is your lever to select TV antenna. This has a, a stationary TV antenna that is already currently up and in the up position and stays there. But you select TV antenna to send the power to the antenna head and receive local TV channels. Now to get the channels you need to go into your menu, go to scan and auto scan for the channels in that area. And every time you move you need to rescan for that area to lock into the channels on the TV head. And we can go ahead and just turn that off if we're not using antenna at the time as it will, could interfere with cable TV or satellite. Now we are entering the restroom here, and the, the biggest thing with the restrooms is they normally locate the GFI 110 receptacle right over here. This, this is the GFI that controls most of the other outlets in the RV. So if you're plugged into power and for some reason the outlets in the kitchen aren't working, normally the one in the bathroom is the culprit. So we'll just go ahead and push the reset button here. Now this unit's also equipped with an electric 110 hair dryer. Most of the toilets now are going with a single foot pedal flush system. You can gently depress on the pedal just ever so slightly to add water to the bowl and then push all the way to the floor to flush the, the toilet. And, and with the RVs, because it is going into a holding tank, the more water the better if you can uh, to help the water uh, drain the tank and, and keep everything liquid. 
in the bedroom, we have uh, another Power Fantastic fan, similar to the one in the kitchen. And we have a uh, carbon monoxide alarm here, uh, mainly for the increase in popularity for generators. If people are running generators outside but possibly have a window open, they are now putting in carbon monoxide alarms to protect against that. The bed lifts up for storage here. And on the, on the Wind River, like we talked about with the uh, propane up front, it comes with a 12-foot barbecue hose, all ready to go up front. And also a manual crank for the stabilizer jacks that are electric. And also a manual crank for the power jack that is also electric. So good, good uh, backup plans there in an emergency. They give you a way to manually crank them as well. Also right over here, we have a secondary TV location. Person can mount a 19 inch flat screen TV here in the bedroom and they provide all the hookups as well. We have an exit window here. Uh, we also we have double doors. Of course, we have a door here in the bedroom, but we also have an exit window in a case of an emergency. Here is the fuse and breaker panel in this RV. This is the best place to look if you're having any issues. We'll go ahead and push it in the middle of the door and it will fold down. Here are all your 110 breakers, very nicely labeled. The 110 breakers are for your air conditioning, uh, electric water heater, microwave, your 110 appliances. Most of the systems are 12 volt, so your lighting, your water pump, your furnace have fuses. So this is the best place to look here if you're having any issues with those. And keep in mind, on this unit, the only things that aren't in the breaker box were the two reset buttons that were outside on the water heater. Everything else is pretty much right here, easy to find. Also, uh, all your RVs are equipped with a fire extinguisher, smoke alarm right here on the ceiling, as well as the carbon monoxide in the bedroom and the propane in the kitchen. Thank you for taking time to go through this RV with us. If you have any questions, feel free to call us or visit our website, www.thompsonrv.com.